I'm Wild Man Steve Brill, otherwise known as the man who ate Central Park. I've been doing foraging tours in and around the greater New York area since 1982. My website is Wildman Steve Brill. Brill is B R I L L dot com. Lots of information on edible wild plants, books, DVDs, other materials that you can purchase and have a lot of fun with. I've tried to make these things user friendly and entertaining as I do with my tours. Common plantain, Plantago Major. Everyone pick some up. What you see is an oval leaf spreading out from the ground in a circle called a basil, B-A-S-A-L rosette. And this is a really important medicinal plant. Let's say one of the kids gets bitten by a mosquito. Oh, it got her, she's itching, she's itching to death, she's dying of itchitis. We gotta do something. Help, call 911, call an ambulance, call a doctor, call a helicopter, call the army, call the navy, call the president. No, don't call him, he's an idiot. <laughs> he is. You take this plant, you mash it up, and you rub it on the bite every few minutes for about 15 minutes. You have to do it right away, and it works. The bite is cured. Look, see, no bite. Uh, for 26 years, I mistakenly told people that this is not worth eating. And then I finally tried something uh, two weeks ago. I took the leaves about this size, washed them off, patted them dry with a paper towel, and then added a mixture of sesame oil, ground caraway seeds, ground fennel seeds, oh, and nutmeg, yeah, yeah, put them on a cookie sheet, it. and bake them at 425 degrees for about uh, uh, six to 10 minutes, stirring occasionally until they were lightly brown and crisp, and they came out tasting like wafer-thin potato chips. Really good, oh, some salt in there too. Yeah, more okay. kids should be doing this, and teachers should get rid of the uh, <laughs> test-based curriculum and give kids hands-on experience with nature and the science that underlies it. That's really important. I do a lot of work with kids and kids are incredibly nature-deprived nowadays and uh, it's, it's, a form, it's a form of intellectual and emotional abuse that's not even conscious. That's the way our society has been going. Uh, reading some of the classic uh, science, get rid of the tests. A really good teacher should know whether a kid is learning or not, and if the kid isn't learning, the teacher needs to do something about it so all the kids learn. Kids also need to work in groups. That's been proven to work better. Uh, different ages working together. Uh, totally, totally different way than what we have today, which is too regimented, compartmentalized and uh, way too much emphasis on test scores rather than learning and inspiration. This mushroom is a member of a group called the polypores. Polypores have three features. They all grow on wood, living wood or dead wood. Two, they're shaped like shelves, not umbrellas. And three, they have little holes underneath called pores where the spores come out. In this group of mushrooms, there are some delicious ones, there are some that are as hard as wood, there are some that taste worse than school lunch, but there are no poisonous ones. This one is good to eat when it is young and soft. If you can't pinch through it, it feels like your shoe, and eating it is like eating your shoe. You could cook it and then it'll be like cooked shoe. <laughs> so we're, we're about a week too late, because two weeks ago there were none, and now they're too old. The uh, very short, stubby stem, it has black areas on it, and it's the only mushroom in the world that smells exactly like watermelon. Violet, Viola papillonaceae, something like that, um, has a heart-shaped leaf with small teeth on the edge, a bilaterally symmetrical flower. The flower has a right and left side. doesn't look the same if you, if you rotate it. Plants with genistein have been used in herbal medicine to slow the growth of cancer and how this would translate in the human body, how to get enough of it to where you need it, hasn't been researched yet, but uh, genistein definitely has a history and it has potential in reducing the risk of cancer. The leaves also are rich in vitamin C. So here's a 
a salad green and a vegetable you can use for cooking that you can collect in great quantity. And we've been picking this here for 26 years. It just keeps growing back again. Zeus got worried <laughs> and used his magical powers to turn Violet into a cow. Ooh. He figured his wife would never suspect he was uh, involved uh, with a cow. A sheep maybe, but not a cow. Uh, when Zeus went home, Violet got hungry. Moo, I want some food! Moo! She started eating the grass. Moo! 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 But the grass was tough, it hurt her mouth, and she started to cry. Moo! Zeus felt sorry for her and turned all her teardrops into violets. And that's the origin of the violet. Have you noticed an increase in the number of people who are interested in foraging? Uh, yes, especially this year. I mean, we have about 50 people here, and I had 50 people a few weeks ago as well. So this has been growing. Uh